Hello and welcome to the last class for Term 4, which is the fifth class of Term 4 for 2020. This is our online presentation and um, looks like we're going to be able to deliver our Term 3 classes in person again. So let me know if you still want me to continue doing these online classes for you because they have been a bit of fun to be doing at home. So this one is by Celeste and she's done this beautiful Just Us two. So this one is using couture papers and she's got a bit of a heavy distressing and some heavy inking on this page for a little bit something that's a little bit different. I will switch to the other camera now and um, we'll get started with our products that we need. So here's the beautiful layout, Just Us Two. You will need a photograph that's a four by six. I have this photo of mum and I, and it does go the other way. So hopefully I can manipulate it to make it work. Celeste's also done a beautiful second layout as well. So using the leftover bits and pieces. So these are your instructions. And in your kit, you should have the papers so there's a cardstock and then there's a couple of papers and then there's a couple of strips which is just different what three different pieces in there that are your um, background papers then you've got some of these manila tags a whole bunch of them probably oh, I don't know a few and then you have this beautiful sticker set so um, these are your stickers oh what is that it is not fussy cutting Ooh you guys are going to be happy. So on to our tools. Looks like pretty basic stuff. So the first thing you're going to need is a glue pen and you will also need some double-sided tape. So there's some glue pen and double-sided tape, some foam mount. I'm just using some of my black um, adhesive foam mount and some liquid glue. I am going to be using my um, art glitter glue. I've put it into this little container seen that before a trimmer and a craft knife so we have a craft knife and a ruler I also have the Carl trimmer which is off screen but it is this one and that's a nice way to cut your papers and things as well you will also need some ink to do your edging and Celeste has used the ground espresso but I can't find mine so I have pulled out some that will work with this which are brush corduroy, frayed burlap, vintage photo and walnut stain. Um, they're not quite as dark as her beautiful ground espresso on here. I think walnut stain might be the closest, but any of the, um, the inks I think will work quite nicely with this one. You'll also need a foam applicator, so I'm going to use the walnut stain, get rid of those, and grab the foam applicator for that and that will be down here that one and what else do we need oh sanding block oh, I left my sanding block at the shop so I have this um, old one from um, oh what is it a basic, basic grey kit and it's basically it looks like an emery board but it's got the sandpaper on it and that's to do your sanding of the edge of your photograph. So let's get started from the instructions. Number one, starting with your red card stock, cut a one inch frame. So let's get rid of these. Grab our red like a squeaky chair. There we go. And we're going to cut a one inch frame. So I use my craft knife and a ruler to do this as a one inch frame. And you're actually, if we look at the original, you're actually only going to see probably a quarter of an inch. Yikes, I dropped the camera, that's not fun. So you're actually going to only see a quarter of an inch around this side here. So this one inch piece on the back is just enough to um, give it something to hang on to. It doesn't have to be exactly one inch, but um, that's the easiest way to do it. So I'm going to use my craft knife and a ruler and cut my one inch frame. You can use a pencil and mark all these markings if you want to. I have markings 
on the inside of my ruler so I can see where my one inch mark will be. The Tim Holtz metal edge ruler will work really nicely for that as well um, and I find the markings on the Tim Holtz ruler are actually a little bit better than the markings on this old one but you can see I've really chopped them up. So this is the metal edge and this one here will be your one inch mark. So if you popped that on the edge of something you'd be able to measure so this edge here you'd be able to measure that one inch mark there. Anyway, that is your frame. Pop the red piece aside. And you can also pop this one aside for the moment. We don't need that one just now. The next piece that you need is the 11A paper. So that's this one here. It's called um, the Naughty and Nice, but it's got the fir trees on it. And we're going to cut that down to 11 and a half by 11 and a half inch square. So. You can use your mat or you can use your trimmer and 11 and a half inches. This one here is 12 so I know that one inch, sorry one mark which is a half inch down will be 11 and a half. So we're just going to take the half inch from two sides and that will give us an 11 and a half inch by 11 and a half inch. So take it from the top and also take it from one side. So one there and one there. So we're taking a half an inch off the top and a half an inch off the side. And now we're going to distress this one heavily with your um, distress tool and then ink it with your ground espresso distress ink. So I have my trusty tool. Oh, I tore it. That's pretty heavy. And we're going to give that a really good, I think we're using this side actually, yeah, so I need to cut this one, give it a really good distress, don't stress too much if you tear it like I just did, it just adds to it, and if you don't like it distressed then don't do it, leave it flat, just put a little bit of ink on it, oh another one, Gone, gung ho now. Keep it there. Some torn bit and a little bit at the top. Okay. And Celeste likes the ink. Nice and dark on this one. So our walnut stain. Jeez, this is an old pad, so I hope it's got a lot of colour on it. Can you see the colour coming through? If I put this underneath, you can see that colour coming through on there. So ink the edge of that. Really munches up those daubers, but they're pretty cheap, so you can get them replaced. I'm going too fast for you just pause the video at the end of the stage that you're still catching up on. One more side. Oh, I've got lots of mess for my maid to pick up. old dauber got munched. You want to be careful with those little pieces of dauber because if you get them stuck on um, your mat and you put a white piece on top of it this is what happens you end up with a big blob of colour so be careful when your daubers get damaged. Just stick this in the bin. Okay the next paper you need is the chestnut, which is that wood looking paper. And you want to cut that one down to nine inches by six inches. 
So let's just have a look and see where it's at at the moment. One, two, three, four, five. It's already six inches. So let's just cut that one at nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine inches. Okay, distress and ink the sides and then put that aside. So again with the distressor. So noisy. needs re-inking. You can always re-ink an ink pad. Um, their Distress Inks have re-inkers. They also have um, refreshers. So if you have an ink pad that's just had the lid left off and it's just really old and you haven't really used it much but it seems to be dry, you can just use the um, special Tim Holtz Distress Ink Refresher. Give it a spray and that will refresh and revive your pad without needing to actually refill it. So if it's colour that it needs, you need a refill. But if it's just um, dried out a little, you can use a refresh. And refresh works for all of the colours. It's just like a clear spray. Um, whereas reinker, you need to buy the exact colour. So for this one, you'd need to buy walnut stain to go in the walnut stain. You'd give it a little bit of ink and then squish it across with something like a credit card or something like that. Uh, now we need the Atlas paper and we're going to cut that one down. That's actually this one. So it's got your um, world map on the back of it. But we're going to be using this Walsing Matilda um, words on this one. And you want to cut that one down to four by nine inches and heavily distress the edges of that. So we want telling lies, sorry, that was not four by nine, that was five by eight. So this is, I would imagine, six. Now let's do the eight first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, ink, distress and ink. Oh, these papers are getting distressed within an inch of their life. Okay, so ink those edges as well. Oh, it shows up nice on this colour. I don't know that it was showing up on my video, but when you do it yourself, you'll notice that the edges are actually... I don't know if you can see it a little bit darker. All right, so that's that piece. And then the next one will be the polka dot piece. So we'll just continue working on this one. And now we're ready for the polka dot piece. Just pause it if, you, if I've gone too fast. So the polka dot paper is the one that's four inches by nine. And this one should already be four. One, two, three. Mine is already four. And then we're going to cut it to nine. And 
distress. Oh, it's quiet in my house all except for this noise that I'm making. My family have all gone to bed. That's the best time to do the video. They finally all disappear. Joshua has gone off to Kevin's house. So that's why you can't hear him in the background. Emily's on prac. Maddie's got to get up early in the morning and work. I'm going into the shop tomorrow morning. Don't know what Andrew's going to do. Find some jobs for him. And Daniel's working too. Oh, very busy house. Okay. All right. Now we're going to take three of the tags and we're going to chop the ends off of those. So grab three tags. One, two, three. And we're going to chop the ends off those. So just got a couple of bits poking out. I don't think it needs to be exactly straight, but that'll be alright. Round about there. There's no great measurement for it, just around about there. And um, distress the edges and guess what? Ink again. Edges. Bit trickier. Now that bread frame, the edges haven't been distressed, but um, you can if you want to. It's a little bit harder once you've already cut that into a frame. Um, Celeste has left hers plain. I'm definitely going to leave mine plain as well, but you can distress that if you're in the real distress mode. Oh, I've got bits of foam going everywhere. We're going to make a photo mat um, from the leftover of your red cardstock. So that piece that you just put aside, find that and make a photo mat for it. So there's two ways of doing a photo mat. You can stick your photo on and then cut around it or you can cut your photo mat to a certain size. So um, it depends on what size your photo is. And mine is a six by four. So I'm just going to cut mine. Actually, I'm going to cut mine to six and a quarter by four and a quarter. One, two, three, four. Four and a quarter. Actually, my photo is a little bit shorter than six inches, so I'm going to make that a bit shorter too, and hopefully it fits. Ta da! All right, now's where you need your sander. So you're going to sand the um, photograph. So I just put mine on the edge of my um, mat. Oh, it's a bit hard to see. I put mine right on the edge of my mat and then sand the edges of it so that it's got white on the edges. So you can see this part here. If I lay it down on the edge of my mat and then run the sander across it, 
bring it back you can see how it's given this white edge so that'll have a nice contrast when you put it onto your layer okay so do that around all four edges of your photograph which gives it a nice mm, well it's kind of a shabby kind of a rustic look to your border of your photograph if you've got a white border on it then just leave it as it is and then you're going to stick that down onto the red mat and that will be your mat for your photograph um, mm, she's distressed this too of course let's distress this red one Now you can stick it down. There we go. And then we can assemble our layout. So we're going to start with the 11A paper that we cut down to 11 and a half and stick that onto, sorry, stick that behind this one here. So we just put some double sided tape on this. It's going to hold those tears in place quite nicely. There, there, there. Now, if you are a little bit unsure about sticking things down with double sided tape, what you can do is just take the double sided tape off the top and then line up the bottom so that you have the right amount of gap here, here, and here. So if it's this one here, you can see it's too, too tight. A little bit more space on that side just eyeball it that way to get your top and your bottom so that it kind of lines up there and get it all to line up before you stick it down so it's not stuck you can stick it there now and you know that you've got that square then you can pull off the other pieces one two and it should just flop into place so now you have that nice and centered without um, worrying about trying to lift it and move it and getting it just how you want it so you need your wood paper you need your matilda paper and you need your polka dot your wood goes here and I would center those three see how you've got this top and bottom space and this space here I would do that so that it's all very similar. This one, this one. The exact measurements are about one and a quarter inches, I think it is. So um, if you want to measure it, you can measure it. I am very much into eyeballing it because you get pretty good at it after a while looking at where it's got to go and seeing how much space is around it. So I'm not just sticking it down, I'm just going to have it on an angle so I'm actually holding just the side and I'm gauging roughly so that this and this is the same and this and this is the same. And the other thing you could do if you were unsure is to use your T-square. So a T-square is a really good way of getting it exactly how you want it. So one and a quarter is about there and that makes sure that it's nice and straight you can use that the top as well if you prefer one and a quarter About that. okay then we've got our polka dot piece which runs down here 
and it's ha hanging in here and hanging down the bottom here okay a little bit closer to the bottom than what it is on the side here so again some double-sided tape So the polka dot paper is also one and a quarter inches from the right hand side, just the same as this one here. So again, you could use your T square if you wanted to, one and a quarter about there. Okay. And then we're going to put in these little tags. So you've got one here and one here and another one here. Now this is where the original had the photograph going horizontal, which is fine if you have a horizontal photo. If you have a vertical photo like me, you're going to have to change this up ever so slightly. So I'm going to pop my photo in here and I also have this piece here to go underneath. So you could have it that it goes this way, but the writing, it, it's actually got this beautiful music pattern on it, so that really needs to go that way. So I'm actually going to do it very similar to how the original layout was. And there's going to be flowers down there. I feel like it needs something here. Maybe I can bring some flowers or something in there as well. But there you go. That's my upright photo. So let's stick those tags down. These could look good if you wanted to put some string on the back of those as well. You could do that afterwards or you could do it now. Take that off. So work out where your layout's going to go and we're going to have this so that it's just poking out there and then this one's going to be a little bit more there. could use this section to do some journaling, you could use that section to put some um, stamping on there if you wanted to, a little bit of doodling, or you could just leave it plain. St tags are so good, you can decorate them, you can add some pattern paper to them if you want, you can, yeah there's so much you can do with those tags. In Michelle's um, art journaling class she had us making all kinds of messes with our art journaling. It just looks so cool. There we go. That one. And then this one. And then it's just a matter of putting your wording on, choosing the words that you want to use. You've got a whole bunch of alphas there, so your alphabet can be used to make your own title. And you have enough left over for the other page. So Celeste's called this one Just Us Two. And the second page she's called Palace of Fine Arts 2019. So that's when she got to travel the world, which is a bit of a pastime now. We, um, nobody traveling now, not even to Perth. Okay, so I feel like that's the main base of the layout and now we just need to use the stickers and she's also inked the edges of these oh look at this coming off oh, oh, oh. and a big beautiful step and that one there no fussy cutting yay you girls happy so she's inked the edges of these that will then make it all tie in beautifully with the rest of the layout 
with those dark, dark edges. I really do feel that that ground espresso would look good. As I say, I don't know what I've done with my ink pad. It seems to have disappeared. It's probably floating around at the shop somewhere. And ink that. Man, I need a new doorbell. Okay. Then the other thing that this particular piece has is a little bit of the uh, magic mat or the adhesive foam underneath it so that it's raised. So you can stick your magic mount in sections underneath like this so that it's raised. In actual fact, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stick mine flat and... There we go. There, and another one. Oh no, they're butterflies. I didn't even realise she had some butterflies up here. She has a couple of them. And then there's also this beautiful one here. How nice is it not to have to fussy cut any of that or punch it. Bit of inky. And that one just gets tucked in there. Oh, I actually only need four pieces. Use a couple more up here, seeing as I've got them left over. Right, ta -da! it's finished. I'm going to add a couple more of these beautiful little flowers just because they're there, and I need to fill that spot just a little bit better. Then some wording. Let's put, what are we going to put on this one? Maybe Mother's Day. Because that's what I was doing. I went to Mum's and we did some gardening. Put up a little fence to keep the dog out of her garden. Had a lovely time. Mother's. Oh, no apostrophe. Okay. Oh, this little one here needs to be moved. Layout is done. Our original, which has a much nicer photograph on it, it's beautiful. Oh, I can't get that straight. And with your leftovers, there is a photograph on your instructions, so you'll be able to create another page using all of these lovely little leftover pieces that um, you have in your kit. And um, of course, mounting them with Magic Mount makes them stand up so much better. So thank you everybody for following along. And I hope that you've got lots of layouts done. I hope that you've had some time to sit and play and do our um, classes. And that you've enjoyed them and I'm sorry that I haven't been able to teach you in person and it's um, still really tricky talking to a camera in the middle of the night hoping that you know what needs to be said is said um, and that you understand what we're doing with our, with our scrapping but you know they've been pretty easy to follow along and um, you guys have been doing classes with us for well most of you have been doing classes with us for ages and I really really do I truly appreciate your support um, and being able to um, still continue doing these classes even though the 
the, the COVID, the COVID-19 just about shut us down. So hopefully we'll be back on board for term three. Please, please book again and um, we will be able to deliver these classes to you. And I know that Celeste has been working very, very hard and has a um, nice lineup for you. And Tani um, and Celeste have been running the shop. So um, we'll be all back on board for term three, ready for all of our classes. So that means our scrapbooking classes as well as our card making classes and our art journaling classes and our kids classes so um, thank you very much for your support and following along with me and I'll see you at the shop soon see you later bye